Good morning, I'm Wayworn Worm, and welcome to my channel. And welcome back to The Stolen Land, episode 14, The Trapper's Debris. The next morning dawned green through the foliage as they packed up their camp and ate another breakfast of trail rations. That delightful meal made up of stuff that keeps very well. Bread that has been cooked until it is hard, meat that has been dried in salt until it resembles meat-flavored salt, legumes that need to boil in water just a bit longer than they ever have time for over a campfire, and nuts of various kinds. Each one knew that the fight with the Will-O-Wisp went much better than it could have. There were so many ways it could have gone wrong that it kept the mood on the somber side. After breakfast, they headed upriver, a direction that, although it seemed deeper into the forest, they had already reached the deepest point that they were going to get on this leg of the expedition. They spent the day mapping the headwaters of the Thorn River, which went very peacefully until they came across the grizzly site. They found a fresh body laying on the ground, its legs crushed by several large logs. It stopped the expedition in their tracks momentarily. Petra was the first to speak up. This was going to be a deadfall trap. She walked over to the tree the body was next to and walked around it a bit. This person was making the trap when something happened, mid-construction, and the trap malfunctioned. Walking around a little bit more, she found the ropes that were going to hang up the locks. Ah, I see what happened. The rope snapped as he was building it and caused the trap to essentially go off. Unfortunately, he was standing under it when it went off and got his legs crushed and was pinned here for the rest of his life. Lucian walked over to a nearby tree stump and pulled a nicely made hand axe out of it. I think it's safe to assume this hand axe belonged to this poor sod. We should take it with us and see if Oleg can identify it for us when we get back. If nothing else, we can provide closure on who this was. While Lucian was doing that, Tiber approached the body and examined it. Sadly, this man died just a day or two ago. It might have even happened while we were on the other side of these woods a few days ago. I'm not yet skilled enough as a cleric to do anything to him now. But had we known, we could have saved him before he died. As it will, as it is, he will most likely be gone in a day or two if we do not bury him. Lucian nodded at Tiber's remarks. That's a good idea. We should pause in our mapping long enough to give this man, whoever he was, a proper burial. It took them a few hours, moving the logs to free the body, and then finding a good place for a burial, and actually digging the grave. But eventually they were ready, and Tiber performed a funeral as best he could. After covering the grave semi-hastily, and only leaving a small cairn as a marker, they finished their mapping just as dusk was setting in, and ate a dinner that was even less prepared than normal. Luckily for them, the night passed by uneventfully, or at least as uneventfully as a night can pass in a forest in an uncivilized land. Nothing approached their camp, at least. No lights in the distance, either, which gave each person secret glee at not seeing as they finished their watch. It was a cool day as they moved through the last bit of forest that, hadn't, that they hadn't mapped east of the Thorn River. As they were moving through a glade, Petra screamed in agony as a steel-jawed bear trap clamped around her leg. Everyone in the Expedition looked at her, temporarily frozen to the spot at the suddenness of it all. After a couple of seconds, everyone rushed to her aid. She waved them off, however. Don't worry, I've got it. I'll skin the trapper who left this completely unflagged if we ever come across them. As she said that, she bent down, pulling out her tools of the trade and taking her time to examine the trap. Within a few seconds, she found what she was looking for and quickly disabled it. There. 
Now, without repair, this trap will never harm anyone else again. She looked out over the glade, then to Lucian. How much would you bet that there are more of these traps in here? If I were a trapper stupid or desperate enough to leave one trap unflagged in the glade, I'd leave more than just one. I'd leave as many as I could. Lucian nodded. I'm sure you're correct. We'll finish mapping this area and leave you to deal with the traps. How does that sound? Petra nodded. Yeah, I think that'll work. Tiber walked over to her and put his hand on her shoulder. Here, you'll need that. And with that, he cast some of his healing magic. Shortly after, the three other members of the expedition left Petra alone in the glade as she started very carefully looking for traps and disabling them the way she did with the one she was caught in. It took her the entire day and several close calls, but eventually she effectively destroyed every single one of the dozens of traps that had been left unmarked in this glade. When the rest of the group rejoined her in the glade, they were surprised and impressed with how many traps there were. Gods above, that is an obscene amount of traps. All of them from this glade and none of them marked in any way? Tiber said as he saw the pile she had left. Petra nodded. Yep, every one of them was from this glade and not a single one of them was marked. I just finished a couple minutes ago, in fact. It was Umbria's turn to be surprised at that. Petra, we've been gone for almost 12 hours, and you just finished? Again, Petra nodded her assent. That is very impressive. While the day before was cool, this next morning dawned with dark rain clouds that rather quickly turned to a steady downpour that lasted their entire trip back to Oleg's. It took them almost the entire day to walk to Oleg's, and by the time they got there, they had been soaked through for a very long time. The grounds inside Oleg's trading post were somewhat of a muddy morass, with churned up mud everywhere. Luckily, Oleg was there to greet them as they arrived. Come in, come in, he shouted over the heavy wind. The banners on the walls of the trading post were moving very stiffly in the wind. Svetlana just finished some stew. Come in, get warm. They were only all too happy to oblige him. Within a very few minutes, they were sitting in front of a large fire with blankets draped over them and their clothes hanging to dry right in front of the fire and large trenchers of stew in their hands. Several hours later, after they had all dried and were com in comfortable clothes again, Oleg sat, sat next to Lucian. So, my friend, I see that you've finished another leg of your long, tedious task. What is your next plan? Lucian looked over to the party for a minute before he looked back to Oleg. Well, the next part, I suppose, is to map the area between the Thorn and the Shrike Rivers. It will take us about a week to do that, and it will give us a chance to meet back up with the soot scales. After that, it will be another trip to the Gnarl Marshes to map between the Skunk and Thorn Rivers. Then to that area that's between the Skunk River, the Shrike River, the Thorn River, and the Gnarl Marshes. I have a feeling that we'll be near the Staglord's Fort by then, and we'll have to avoid it. However, that also means a likely increase in the frequency of bandits. We may have destroyed his base to extend his power into the northeast here, but he still has his main fort. That's going to be something to watch out for. Oleg nodded sagely, or at least what he intended to be sagely. Very good plans. The trading post continues to grow. Both with the frequent stops you make here, but also as knowledge of this expedition and your success so far has started traveling in Rustland. We're getting more hunters and trappers coming down this way. They know this area is rich in animals, but it's always been considered too dangerous for most. But with the bandits, the mites, 
and the Cobalt being taken care of in one fashion or another, there are more people willing to move here. I've even had a couple of farmers send me requests to settle near here next summer. Their plan is to move here and have a house and everything built by the time the weather turns and the next spring start actually farming. They're willing to pay taxes to me as long as I keep the trading post open for them in times of need. It looks like the green belt will start to be settled within a year or so. Of course, that means I'll have to expand this post to make it something fitting for a fort, but that is what it is. And Lucian smiled. That's wonderful, Oleg. Hopefully, by that time, we'll have beaten back the Stag Lord, and the Sword Lords will have decided who gets the charter to control this land. I have a feeling that while a town will form around your trading post, there will be another town that forms around the Stag Lord's fort after it's emptied. Oh, while we're talking, a few days ago we found a dead trapper, and the only identifier we could find was this axe. Will you look at it and tell us who it belonged to? Oleg was only too happy to look at the axe, and he recognized it almost instantly. It belonged to Brieg, Brieg or Linovanch. He was a very disreputable trapper who was known to be cruel. I can't say this area will be worse off without him. He also had no family that I know of. Well then, it's a good thing we buried him properly. Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you so much for listening to episode 14 of The Stolen Land. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for the next episode of the Monster Manual Backward. We will be going through the camel, the mule, and the donkey. Thank you.